Hey guys, this week we're doing a very special episode of Married to the Rides. We're focusing on Robert Downey Jr.'s 1965 eco-friendly Corvette in honor of New York International Auto Show coming up this weekend. But don't worry, we'll be back next week with more amazing GCD builds. Welcome to a Married to the Rides limited edition episode. Oh yeah. As custom car builders, building cars for shows are a huge part of our business. Many of our customers come to us to build cars for them, specifically for car shows, like the New York International Auto Show. This year, GCD has many special vehicles that are displayed at the auto show in New York, and the reason being is that the client is a very famous person. His name is Robert Downey Jr., and these cars are going to be for his show, Downey's Dream Cars. Man, a show off. That was really good. Show off. Robert took several of his cars and made them more eco-friendly, whether it be electric motors or eco-friendly materials. This year, he has six cars at the New York International Auto Show, and GCD Auto Studio had a hand in building five of them. So we took Robert's 1965 Corvette and completed this eco-friendly transformation by using environmentally friendly paint, recycled rubber for the tires, and a full mushroom interior. That's right, mushroom. Welcome, Welcome to, to a special. very special... Oh. What are you doing? You ah. added very. Stop it's it. very. You stop it. All right. Welcome, Welcome to, to a special this. edition. <laughs> oh, you can see. I stop. Ready? Welcome, Welcome to, to a special, special edition of Married to the Rise. I'm going to trick Linda into getting this thing done. <laughs> Welcome back to a Married to the Rides limited edition. It's pretty exciting getting a call to build a car on a TV show. It's even more exciting when that car is for Robert Downey Jr. So the first thought in my head was like, wow, this is an amazing opportunity. The second thought, how am I going to convince Linda to go ahead and do this? So you want me to play off of him telling me that, saying, hey, listen, we're going to do this and I can say how I was upset because I was on my way to, to pottery class and I had to come back and sit and talk to him because they needed a decision right away. So after you get the call, you're like, should we do this, should we not do it? Um, we already have a pretty solid client base, a lot of work. Um, and, uh, you know, this is going to take up a lot of time. Um, the exposure could be great. Not everyone thinks it's such a good idea to convert an original 65 Corvette into an electric uh, vehicle. And including us, but when the customer has a mission and it's something that he's passionate about, you you definitely want to support that. But then again, then you're looking at it and go, it's Robert Downey, it's uh, it's a 65 Corvette, but now we're tearing this all original car apart. So it's, uh, it's a big decision to make. Well, I was already just annoyed that you made me miss my pottery class because we wanted a decision like now. Like, are we going to do this now because they need to know now. So that was... I don't know, that was almost a deal breaker. But um, obviously in the interest of the shop and for the opportunity that it was, you know, I, I said yes. Yeah. And, and because you would have kept bothering me, so I said True. yes. True. I mean, I already, yeah. in my mind, agreed to do it. And probably. You probably said yes already. I probably said yes already. And then, you know. So I just spent the rest of the time trying to convince that's you. That's typical. And when we were originally told, obviously, what it was, I don't think we realized how nice it was and how perfect it was until it showed up at the shop and then you're like, oh my God, we have to tear this thing apart. Like I still remember taking all the mm -hmm. trim off and we didn't know we were painting the trim yet. And I was yeah. like, oh, we can polish the chrome. It's in such good shape. And then, uh, and then yeah, he wanted to paint the chrome and we were all like, oh. <gasps> then of course I went online and started looking and I see that's like one of his favorite cars. You know, he's driving all the time and things all original. So you, it's kind of like that, you have that reservation of should we do this, then the, once the car got to the shop and I saw like how nicely done the electric conversion was done by Electrify Garage, and the fact that they didn't really change anything in that engine compartment, that it, it could in yeah. theory go back to being a gas powered vehicle, then I was like, all right, now we're just talking cosmetics. I felt, like in my mind, I felt an obligation to do it because I knew we could do this project justice, we can do it not a TV show car, but we can do it as a client car and, and make sure that it is absolutely 100% to our standards. Well, I honestly don't even know what a TV show car is. I just know how to do cars. 
Yeah, I just say TV show and I do these things. I don't know what it is. It's TV show car. It means like, it's just for TV. Just gotta look good on TV. How does that work? I don't know. They do it all the time, though. Well, they shouldn't. Just build the car. That's why we do. That's did. what we do. So. I don't want to build something that just gets by. That's not what we do. That's not what I want to do. Hey, our name's on it. So ultimately, yeah. when you hand off that car, it has to be 100%. Mm -hmm. And regardless of production company mm -hmm. and TV schedule and mm -hmm. TV budgets, ultimately, it's Robert's car. Yeah. And you're handing this off to him. And Robert's not going to care about the timelines and the budgets. In the end, he's looking at that car. Yeah. So it has to be held to that standard. So, the, I mean, the production company gave us, what, maybe three months? Because I'm trying to remember, I know they gave us a specific date, so I think from the time we got it, I mean, they put it to us pretty quick. So, long and short, our list is, comes in, break it down, catalog, remove all the paint, any fiberglass repairs, prime it, uh, get it ready for paint, find rims, paint the rims, get all the trim scuffed and ready for paint, and have Jay paint all the trim and reassemble the vehicle. Then it goes off for its mushroom interior, a new top. You know, when, when we took all the paint off, and obviously nobody around here blasted walnut shells, so that was all by hand. All of us, sanding, little blisters all over our hands. Um, and we were all so happy when everything was off, all the paint was off, that there were really only a few fiberglass repairs that needed to be done, which saved a ton of time. I mean, really, we just had a little bit around the headlight and a couple other little areas, so we really locked out, and that saved, saved us a lot of time. Yeah, and I think for us, like, when you're taking a part in an all-original car that's probably never been a part before, so now you're taking apart the dash, the gauges, and you're pulling all that, I mean, there's potential that things could break, and then now you gotta go and source some of that stuff, and. Um, and then, you know, once you get it all apart, now you're working with those pieces and yeah. you need seat foam and you need seat tracks and you need, you know, uh, all these clips and fasteners and it, it's uh, potentially, you know, you could run into issues. Honestly, the guys were so excited about having that project, who wouldn't be? And they, I mean, they really worked and it was, you know, everybody was there, everybody's on time, everyone work, 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 quick eat lunch, work, 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 you know, and, um, and it went pretty smooth, but I think it was the fact that, oh my God, we're working on Robert Downey Jr.'s car. And the opportunity that it presented, I think really, the fact that it was like we were all working towards this, this common goal, it was like, okay, it's like beat the clock, you know? And we're all gonna you know, make sure that this gets done. Okay, what's the deadline? What's the timeline? All right, let's go, let's do this. And um, it was kind of like one of those, like, you know, you're all in a football game, you're like, ah, everybody's working together, we're gonna win the game, and that's, that's really what it felt like, so. Although on this episode, we focus mainly on the 1965 Corvette, we happened to work on a few other cars for Downey's Dream Cars. We did the Mercedes Benz, which was powered by a cooking oil motor. Um, we did the K10 Blazer, which was another electric vehicle. Um, we did the VW bus work on that as well. That was an electric. Um, we did the El Camino, which was a full build on our side. So paintwork, um, mechanicals, full interior. Um, and that was kind of a eco-friendly kind of flex fuel motor. Um, and then the last car that was on the show, which we didn't work on except for a steering wheel uh, wrap was the uh, Buick Riviera. I mean, it is kind of interesting though, you know, that there was a little confusion with the, uh, the paint color, you know. If you want to talk about it. <laughs> we had our color palette and we had our color picked for the Corvette and we did a spray out um, just so we would have an idea of what this was going to look like, make sure we got the color and uh, everything was all ready and set to go. But during the Zoom call with Robert that we had, we realized that that wasn't the color he originally picked. It was the one that was next to it. So, you know, you're a little bit behind the eight ball, but thank God we hadn't paid in the car because um, that would have been a disaster. You know, they originally were going to just leave the chrome as chrome, and then they decided that, you know, to go along with the concept of the other cars that 
were being built for the specific purpose. Instead of painting it, painting it like a color, he opted for the stainless, which I think looked phenomenal uh, for this car on the blue. Um, the benefit of our shop being all-inclusive and being a one-stop shop is we have a specialty in interiors. So we jump in with the team. Uh, first task is go ahead and start stripping that interior completely, keeping track of all the parts, you know, getting the dash apart, the doors apart, um, the carpet. And then uh, I think the next step is kind of doing an inventory of what we may need because um, we know we need seat foam, we know we need certain brackets, um, we, you know, we need certain trim pieces for the panels. So we go ahead and get that ordered ahead of time. Um, and then it's on to the seats. We got to get the frames all set. We got to put new foam on it. Um, then Julio's got to jump in and he's got to take that new foam, start patterning out the leather, mushroom leather, um, and then he's got to stitch that up. You know, and then the project grew a little more. They said, all right, we're going to do the dash and we're going to do the door panels. So Guido jumps in and now we got to start making patterns for the dash. We got to start making patterns for the door panels, getting all that laid out, stitching that up. And again, the challenge is mushroom leather. It's a little thicker. It's a little harder to work with. It doesn't lay down as easy as, you know, some finer leather. So that has to go ahead and get laid down on the panels and reassembled and fit like it's factory. Right, so we got to put this convertible top on a freshly painted car that has a satin finish on it. So there's no touch up, there's no polishing out a scratch because as soon as you hit it with a buffer to try to take out a scratch, you're going to make it shine and that kind of ruins that whole satin look. So a little pressure. I think that probably the biggest challenge was finding rims for this car because of the offsets and he had, a, Robert had a very uh, particular look in mind for what he wanted to accomplish and obviously we were painting them the body color. So we used uh, recycled uh, tires. Some of these companies now have these tires that are eco-friendly. So we made sure to source those. Um, and then putting it all back together was probably the hardest part. You know, we all kind of took a hand in that because now you have a beautifully painted car that you cannot touch up the paint because it's a matte clear and there is no hiding anything. Everything shows. So painstakingly we put the car back together and then uh I was actually uh, excited I got to go and watch the race um, of Robert's Corvette against a gas-powered traditional Corvette and um, it was pretty awesome to see that and just even to see him side by side um, just the difference in the appearance but obviously the uh, eco conversion won and it was almost foiled, though, by a gopher that was at the end of the runway. I remember that. I remember him coming back and being like, oh my god, did you see that? And we all saw it. We all saw this thing run out, and he's flying, and this thing is running out from the, from the side of the weeds there. I would have been there, but unfortunately, three days before another reveal was supposed to happen, we got the VW bus. And we had to do uh, a lot of things to that thing. So uh, unfortunately, I had to stay back at the shop with the guys. And then uh, 96 hours later, um, we got combined it done. hours. Yes. 96 hours, combined hours later, we got it done. So I missed my opportunity <laughs> to uh, to partake in that reveal and to meet Mr. Downey personally, um, Someone's which could have changed my trajectory. I mean, like who knows? I mean, Robert and I get together, and uh, you know, it's a whole different show. I think so. Hollywood's calling. It's probably my agent right now. Humble. Uh, Bobby, please. <laughs> I am in the middle of something. <laughs>I really think we accomplished Robert's vision of turning this 1965 Corvette into an eco-friendly classic car, but still maintaining that classic car look and the beauty of the 1965 Corvette. I mean, the 65 Corvette had, I would say, the biggest impact on Downey's dream cars, you know, that show. Um, it's the poster child for the show. It's also a great, I think, a great representation about converting classic cars into eco-friendly vehicles. I mean, you know, if you're going to pick a car, that's the car to pick. The whole point of doing this conversion is obviously so it's environmentally friendly. 
but you still don't want to lose sight that these are classic cars and they're iconic. So the fact that we weren't doing any body modifications, like they didn't want to put big fender flares on and they didn't want to do wings and you know, they didn't want to add anything. They kept to the true silhouette of the Corvette as it was and um, still all the same chrome trim, same classic interior, but they just used materials that were eco-friendly. So it was still a true 65 Corvette. I mean, it's, it's a 1965 Corvette. It's a C2 Corvette. The body style is gorgeous. Um, when looking at the color choice with the paint and the finish on the paint being a matte finish and then the simplicity of the wheel, um, I think it actually enhanced the beauty of the design of the car because it, it allowed the curves and the lines to be highlighted more. I mean, it's a dark blue with a tan top, so it's still iconic color choice, but I think the finish on it allowed the vehicle to actually showcase better um, from a design perspective. Actually, I think it's one of the nicest colors out of the six cars, I think. So. Yeah, he, he didn't like the that like weird fleshy color mm. that they did that one. No. No. <laughs> look, like my, look like my arm. Oh, yeah, I didn't like it. Yeah. In the end, when this whole thing came together, it was probably my favorite paint job ever. And and in the beginning, and to be really skeptical, and then in the end, to see this like amazing car that clearly he absolutely loves, um, it, it was. I think it was a home run for sure. I, I loved it. I loved the car. I loved the way it came out. Um, and then, I mean, once it's done, you know, yeah. it gets sent off. You don't know uh, how it's gonna be received and then you you see uh, the car is on Motor Trend magazine, it's on EV Builder magazine cover car, you yeah. know, and it's uh, the graphic comes out for the TV show, it's the car, it's yeah, front and center, right. on the website, it's front and center. I mean, all the promos that Robert cut to promote the show, he's with the Corvette and it's just like, all right, so clearly he loves the favorite. Corvette, you know. <laughs> yeah. I know you're not supposed to have favorites, but when we build it, I do. you definitely have favorites. With people too. Oh, okay. <laughs>actually formed some relationships with some of the professionals that were behind the camera and in doing that it kind of pushed us to have what we have now which is our show Married to the Rides and the nice thing about that is we now have the opportunity to show everybody exactly what we did the process the pictures the progress um, things that you didn't get to see on the actual show you know, and there's always this nice picture of all of us standing in front of it, you know, before it left. And I always remember that because it was kind of like that, like, oh, yeah, we did it. You know, the call started because of a positive relationship we have with Terry, a good friend of ours, who basically went out on a limb and said, hey, these guys can do it. You know, so that goes on to a relationship with Ben, who uh, was the producer on the show. You get to meet the people behind the camera, you know, the camera operators, Patrick, Ryan, Kyle, you have people that are in this industry who have filmed in so many different places and they're coming to our shop and they're impressed with us. So, I mean, without this car, without this show, uh, we wouldn't have taken the next step to go out on a limb and do this show called Married to the Rides and form even bigger relationships. So for me, it starts with that 65 Corvette and it ends with a lot of amazing builds. The experience with Robert Downey Jr.'s 1965 Corvette was, uh, it was amazing. It was, uh, it was a bonding moment with a team of craftsmen. Um, the electric part of the vehicle is inspiring. Um, I can see it done on other muscle cars, definitely in the future. You know, obviously we would do it again because here at GCD, we are 100% married to the rides. That was kind of what I said, but you just said it over in a longer way. You went like this, I went like that. All right, it's getting late and Linda's getting really cranky because right, I haven't eaten all day.
been a lot of fun telling you a story about the Robert Downey Jr. Corvette. Tune in next week for an all-new episode of Married to the Rides. Don't forget to like, follow, and visit the GCD social media pages often for more updates on what's happening in the garage. Married to the Rides on PowerTube TV. Like this show? Want more? Then head to WatchPTTV.com, the new 100% free PowerTube TV streaming network. Home of the best classic and new motorsports racing and build shows on the web.